Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm going to try and attempt to break some of this down. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to do this probably in a series of videos because there is just so much information here and um, so much to be looked at that I don't know that it can be done in one video. I don't think it can. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is to break it down into sections or events of God and how those line up with uh, the, uh, the Jewish feasts, okay, uh, that have been fulfilled in the church and those th that have yet to be fulfilled in the church. And so it's an amazing thing, like I said, it's really kind of eye-opening when you look at the Jewish feasts um, that have been fulfilled in the church and then, uh, you know, the, the message of divine mercy preparing us for the second coming, these events of God correspond with events that will take place on earth, okay? Some of which are persecutions of the church, so there's signs within the church, and then uh, events of God are outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And those um, are broken up in three, two. So we have the Passover, um, Pentecost, the Day of Atonement, and then the Feast of Tabernacles is the way those line up. Okay, and the ones that correspond to those, okay, is the Passover of the church or the final trial for the church. And I would point out that it started um, with Jesus uh, in the garden, okay? So it kind of started, the persecution got worse and worse and worse and worse, the persecution of Jesus worse and worse and worse. And then, the, but the real suffering started in the garden and then it escalated all the way to the crucifixion. So this, this persecution is something that's, that uh, is going to climb to a, um, a crescendo, okay? In, in which, like the catechism says, that we will follow our Lord in his uh, passion and death. Um, the second one is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and that's Pentecost. Now, that is an event that is um, prophesied not only in scripture, but it's prophesied through authentic prophets in the Catholic Church. Um, a number of them, now that I um, go through, a number of them obviously were in the book, The Warning. <coughs> and there's a couple that um, that are not approved, and that would be Garib and Dahl. I, I don't know if the Flame of Love was approved or not. I, I don't think it's been condemned. And then, uh, Father Gobi as well. I, I don't know if all those messages were were um, uh, have been approved either. Okay, so I'm I'm kind of approaching this with kids kid kid gloves. Okay, so um, one thing that I will say is I did look into um, Father Gobi's uh, messages, and um, I found some things where that were at you know when they first came out they were there was something that was about it that was problem problematic and what was problematic about it was that it kind of um, added to um, what was taught in the catechism of the Catholic Church about the end times um, there was nothing contrary to what the church taught but it seemed to give shed more light on that and um, so I think from what I read or what I uh, looked into last night I think it was said that his messages, he was to say that his messages were more through contemplation rather than directly from the Virgin Mary. Now, with that being said, I believe that um, the church will expand on a teaching when there is more light given. And so um, I will say this, in, in Father Gobi's, um, uh, I don't wanna say defense, but you know, kind of looking at it from that way, Something um, to notice about scripture, especially in the book of Daniel, that deals with the end time. We know that directly from the angel. Um, when he's speaking to Daniel, he tells Daniel to seal up the book until the end time. And so there, we, we have the book of Daniel, but it's been sealed. And it will be opened, which I believe it has been, and is being, you know, a, a lot more light is being shed on the book of Daniel. Um, uh, will be open to understanding uh, or greater understanding towards the end time, according to the angel. Seal up the book until the end time. So if that's the case, then 
what the church teaches, let me, I want to be very clear about this, what the church teaches um, about eschatology and the four last things is solid, and we cannot differentiate from that in any way, shape, or form. What can happen is that there is a greater understanding of what the church teaches and then more detail added to that. So it doesn't change church teaching in any way, shape, or form. But from what I understand, you know, a, a dogma or it can be ex, uh, expanded to a greater understanding, much like the dogmas we have with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the church, how they've come over a period of time, you know, in, in which we began to understand as a church <coughs> the importance and the role of the, of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the plan of salvation. So um, I do want to I do want to say that right off the bat. Um, the other thing I do want to say is that um, when I spoke about in one of the previous videos about if you understand the times in which we're living, if you understand we're living in the end times and that's real to you, then you've been blessed. <clears throat> I want to make it clear that the end times began with the ascension of Jesus. Okay, but it, what I mean by real is that. Faith becomes living in the sense that we see the world in a different way. We see, you know, the um, every uh, disorder in the world was caused by the first sin. And that's really to have the, you know, the veil removed from your eyes and kind of see things as they are. Now, with that being said, it, I think it's pretty obvious to everybody that is um, paying attention and everybody that's spiritual, um, it, it's very obvious that we're living in some very extraordinary times. And um, so again, I, I want to make that clear. The end times began with the ascension of Jesus and it culminates at the second coming of Jesus. Um, the um, other thing I wanna to go to is how I understand this, okay? So what I'm presenting here is my understanding of of these events and as i said before they they coincide with um the major jewish feasts okay of passover pentecost and the day of atonement which according to christian theology is the day of the lord um or the day of divine wrath according to the blessed mother um to Faustina and so that's something that we need to take into consideration kind of what we're doing here or what I'm doing here is I'm taking um, prophecy applying it to church teaching and then applying it to scripture to kind of get a better understanding and I think that's what everybody's kind of looking for is an understanding of the events um, I do want to correct myself in one of, in the last two videos that I did I, I quoted one of these messages um, and I believe I said it was Elizabeth Kettleman, but it wasn't, it was Father Gobi that I was quoting. And so I think that's where I'll begin is just with some of these messages that are here and kind of look at them and then um, again, present my understanding of it and, and look at these messages along with scripture and then uh, kind of present my case of why I understand it that way. And so, um, Again, this is just a, a study that, that I'm doing and presenting it. Again, if there's uh, anything that, you know, veers off into some kind of crazy stuff, you know, I feel welcome to correct me. Um, but there, again, there's just so much information here, it would be almost impossible to do it in, um, in one video, okay? Something that I would point out and that I would like to point out is that the culmination of all of this, what we're looking at, is the fulfillment of um, three Catholic prayers. And, um, well, two Catholic prayers and the end of the creed. And so the Our Father, um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, um, which really moves into the messages and the, the teaching and, and some of the diary and things which I still don't have of Luis Procreta and that, um, Luisa Picaretta, okay, which is is really kind of drawing us into how to live in, in the divine will. Um, the other one is uh, the creed. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So there is a world to come and there is a life that is 
contained in that world. Um, and then also the prayer to the Holy Spirit that we say, uh, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. And that's really what we're talking about here is, is the, the, the destruction of evil and the renewal of the earth, okay? So within, within that process, there are prophecies um, that take place or prophesied to take place towards the end of time, uh, one of which is the warning, another which I understand to be a um, an, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, again, falling in line with, um, with the Jewish feast, which would be Pentecost, a second Pentecost, and then the Day of Atonement itself, um, which is the Day of the Lord. And as I said before, it's very important for us to understand that you know when when Jesus comes and and it's described in the in the diary of Faustina as the day of divine wrath what we have to understand is that um, when that day comes Jesus is bringing salvation to those who love him and to destroy godlessness off of the face of the earth and this is one of the reasons that I continually say um, don't worry, don't fall into anxiety. This is something that we should be looking forward to and be happy about. We should, <laughs> we should be rejoicing in this. And especially again, because I, you know, the times I believe in which we're living. And I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of people that can see that. So I think what I'm gonna start off with here is just to read a couple of these messages. Um, I'm gonna go with the ones that, uh, that kind of jump out was um, Elizabeth Kettleman, um, Garabindal, and um, what was the other one? Uh, Father Gobi. Okay. And so um, I understand, again, these to be three separate events. Okay. And again, there's, there's reasons for that. And that's what I'm going to try to present here. And again, you know, if, uh, if there's someone that can, you know, has a different view or whatever like that, I'm more than welcome to hear it. It may enlighten it. Like I said, not one person understands all of it. Okay. So I understand it to be the warning and outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the event of divine mercy. And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and get into these and, uh, read them and then just kind of uh, talk about them a little bit. And I may go into some scripture here as well, okay? Because there's some things that are very, very important in scripture. <clears throat> okay, this one is to um, Elizabeth Kettleman. It says, uh, the Lord said that the spirit of Pentecost will flood the earth with his power and a great miracle will gain the attention of all humanity. This will affect, this will be the effect of grace of the flames of love. <clears throat> okay, so the spirit of Pentecost will flood the earth with his power. Now, again, that could be seen as the warning a great miracle will gain the attention of all humanity. Again, that could be the warning, but we also have to remember that in Garabandal there was prophesied a permanent sign. Okay, so a warning, a miracle, and a sign. So that permanent sign will gain the attention of all humanity too. So this is what I'm saying. This is why we gotta be careful and kind of read it carefully. If we just jump into everything that says you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit will be poured out on the earth or um, uh, you know, the flame of love will burst forth and things, we, it can't, they can't all be seen as one event. And that's what begins to happen when you start to look at these things kind of carefully. It's what I really noticed. I kind of, um, I highlighted some things um, because again, there are a number of signs and, and it's actually spoken of here. Um, so it says that um, due to the lack of faith, the earth is entering into darkness, but the earth will experience a great jolt of faith. People will believe and will create a new world. By the flame of love, 
confidence and faith will take root. The face of the earth will be renewed because something like this has not happened since the word became flesh. Earth, although flooded with sufferings, will be renewed by Our Lady's intercession. And that's one of the things that I noticed about um, in just jumping back and forth through these. Um, and again, I'm not real familiar with them. <laughs> like I said, I was quoting, I think, Father Gobi instead of Elizabeth, and I said it was Elizabeth. So that tells you how familiar I am with this stuff. Um, that's one theme that I noticed between Elizabeth Kettleman and Father Gobi is she's, we're talking about a renewal of the earth, okay? A new creation, which actually, again, points to the fulfillment of those three prayers in the, in the Catholic Church, okay? The Our Father prayer, uh, the prayer to the Holy Spirit, and then the end of the creed. She goes on. Um, this is another one. Our Lady spoke, do not abandon the battle. Through the flame of love, a new era of grace never known on earth will begin. And that points when she says error of grace, that is a long period of time. In Fatima, she said a period of peace. Okay, so it's, it's like I said, words are really, really important. We have to really listen when we kind of study these things. Okay, um, another one. When the effect of grace of my mother's flame of love pours out into all hearts, she will be venerated as never before. All will join in one gigantic prayer of petition and then goes on to say, give my messages to those in authority and tell them not to impede my mother who wants to pour out the flame of love. Okay, um, this is uh, another one and this one I think is kind of a popular one. I've seen it somewhere else before. I don't remember where. Um, but it says, Earth is experiencing a calm before the storm like a volcano about to explode. Earth is now in a terrible situation. The, cra the crater of hatred is boiling. I, the beautiful ray of dawn, will blind Satan. No dying soul should be condemned. My flame of love will now be lit. It will be a terrible storm, a hurricane, that, I want, that will want to destroy faith. In that dark night, heaven and earth will be illumined by the flame of love that I offer souls. And there's that word illumined again. Note, I would also point out that it's, look, it says not only earth, but heaven will be illumined. Okay? My flame of love is burning. It is so great that I cannot keep it any longer within me. It leaps out to you with explosive power. And this is really important. When it pours out, my love will destroy satanic hatred that contaminates the world. When it pours out, that is the event of the pouring out of the flame of the heart of Mary, okay? The flame of love, it will destroy hatred, okay? Um, that was never said in Garibaldi. Um I think you know that in uh, Garibaldi, um you have the warning, the miracle, and the permanent sign, okay? So the first two are warnings, if you will. And that lines up perfectly with Medjugorje, in which the first two are warnings, and then the third is a permanent sign. And I believe a permanent sign, if I'm not mistaken, was also um, talked about in Akita. Okay, so personally, I believe a permanent sign will appear everywhere Our Lady has authentically appeared. But this is really, really important because we know from the testimonies of um, the visionaries in Garibandal that some will accept the warning and some will not, which tells me that this message of the flame of love, okay, it leaps out to you with explosive power. When it pours out, my love will destroy the satanic hatred that contaminates the world, okay? The greatest number of souls will be set free. Nothing has like this has existed before. This is my greatest miracle that I will do for all. No need for this miracle to be authenticated. It will authenticate the miracle in each soul. All will recognize the outpouring of the flame of love, okay? She says all will recognize the outpouring of the flame of love. And it says, the message itself says that it will destroy satanic hatred that contaminates the world. Um, 
with the warning, from what I understand, some people, and again, this is how I understand it, some people will accept it. Some people um, will see it as a sign that, uh, <laughs> that you know, it, things are getting close. And others will completely reject it. And so to destroy the satanic hatred that contaminates the world um, and all souls will recognize it, to me, doesn't seem that this outpouring of love, and I could be wrong, but this outpouring, this explosion of love to the, um, from the Blessed Mother that will renew the world, I don't understand how that can be the warning if some people are going to reject the warning. And that's coming directly from the seers of Garabindal. So it's not my words, it's theirs. I'm just pointing it out. Okay. Um, that was the one about Vatican II, which I thought was kind of cool. So let's go to the messages of Garabindal here. Um, this one's from October 18th. And these are kind of the ones that deal with the illumination and the light and the outpouring and, and all that kind of stuff. So these are, I kind of handpicked these ones. Um, it says, uh, since my messages of October 18th has not been complied with and has not been made known to the world, I tell you that this is the last one. Before the cup was filling, now it is overflowing. Many cardinals, bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is be given to the Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. Um, I've said this over and over and over again, and I, I really, it, I'm kind of getting tired because I keep getting asked, well, how do we prepare? How do we prepare? How do we prepare? The answer is penance, 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 prayer, sacrifice, fasting, receiving communion, staying in scriptures, going to confession often. That's how we prepare. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say it again. It's just, I'm tired of saying it. It says you should turn around. Turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask for forgiveness with sincerity of your heart, he will forgive you. I, your mother, through the intercession of the Archangel Michael, want to tell you to amend your lives. The last warnings are upon you. I love you very much, and I don't want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity. Um, this is one of the things that I've talked about before, sincerity of heart and humility in prayer. Okay, uh, sincerity is, is the, the main thing. We have to mean what we say. Um, so often what happens is in mass when we're going through uh, the formal prayers, whether the Our Father or the Rosary or whatever it is, formal prayer we're praying, we become so used to it, it just comes off our lips and we're not really thinking about what we're saying. And we need to be sincere about what we're just saying. Um, forgive us our sins in the, in the same way that we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. That's a big one. And that is something that should be said sincerely and it's something that we should immediately reflect on and think about, is there anyone that I haven't completely forgiven? And um, if that's hard for us to do, then we need to pray for the grace to be able to do that. Okay. It says... Uh, and I will grant your requests. Okay, so pray, pray to us sincerely and we will grant your requests. Uh, you must make more sacrifices and reflect on the passion of Jesus. What I highlighted here is that um, Our Lady says to, um, I'm not even sure who she said it to, it looks like Conchita, <clears throat> that the last warnings are upon you. Okay, so this is really important. Remember I said words are important. The words warnings or the word warnings is plural. That means two. That means more than one warning. So um, there is more than one event of God that will act as an, a warning, act as a warning to humanity. Okay. They, now they've given it the name, the warning. They call it a judgment in miniature, a number of, of different titles for it. But I think we're in just, in my opinion, where things have become confused is that people are tending to look at this outpouring of the Holy Spirit or these flames of love bursting forth from the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Anything that has to do with the Spirit or illumination or light, 
they're calling the warning. And um, it doesn't seem that way to me, um, especially from scripture and even more so when I, from the understanding that I was given anyway. And um, as far as scripture goes, and now looking at these apparitions, it really doesn't look like that either. Um, there's more than one warning. These are the words of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, the, the uh, apparitions of Garabandal, again, have not been approved, but they haven't been condemned. So if you want to believe what the Blessed Mother said word for word, this is what she said. The last warnings are upon you. And so there are more than one. Uh, here's the other thing I want to point out. When we went to, what was the first one I read? I think it was, yeah, from Elizabeth Kettleman, okay? That, that this, when this pours out, my love will destroy satanic hatred that culminates, the, that uh, contaminates the world. And this outpouring of love, um, through the flame of love, a new era of grace never before known on earth will begin. Um, the face of the earth will be renewed because something like this has not happened since the word became flesh. Okay? And so we need to keep this in mind. The world will be, the world or the earth will be renewed because something like this has not happened since the word became flesh. So <clears throat> what we're saying is that the warning, if we're going to take this to be the warning, okay, is, um, and take it at face value, Right, that this the the warning is the greatest miracle since the world became since the word became flesh. Well, do you realize that would mean that it's a great a greater miracle than um, what Faustina or what Jesus spoke to Faustina in the diary immediately after the tribulation? That's, that's in Matthew twenty four, and also um, a greater miracle. Then what I think what we're going to read here, or what I highlighted, was the manifestation of divine mercy. It would be a greater miracle than the second coming itself. Okay, so again, words are important. Oh, this is what I wanted to point out here. Um, the effects of it. Now, when you go to Elizabeth. Kettleman, the flame of love. There are there are things in here that look like the warning, okay? That say that we will see ourselves in, in divine truth. Um, heaven and earth will be illuminated by the flame of love um, that I offer to souls. Um, but within Elizabeth's writings, it looked even that looks to have to be two different things, okay? So we have an initial one that will lead to an explosion which renews the face of the earth, an explosion of God's love. All of this is going to come through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and through the Sacred Heart of Jesus. One of the things that I noticed is that, um, and this is a Garabindal, um, this was an interview that was done. Um, it says, we could suffer, suffer in the daytime as well as the night, whether we are in bed or not. That's really, really important. And what I'm gonna point out here is um, where I believe the warning is in scripture. So in the day and in the night, in other words, it'll happen all over the world at the same time, okay? Um, she says, if we die during that time, it will be a fright. If I could only tell you how the Virgin described it to me because the chastisement, that will be worse. Okay, so the chastisement is actually worse than the warning. Now, notice the notice the the difference between the language from Elizabeth to Conchita. In one, we have a flame of love pouring out that's going to transform our hearts into perfect love. There's no talk of suffering in this explosion of love from the Blessed Virgin Mary that will eventually renew the face of the earth. Um, at the manifestation of divine mercy, according to Father Gobi. So these all, all three of these seem to be connected to me and going through them, okay? But you notice with Elizabeth, there doesn't say anything that I've read anyway so far about suffering. So if anyone out there is more familiar with the writings of Elizabeth Kettleman and this event, um, talking about that it will hurt us or that we will suffer from it, 
Um, I haven't seen that yet. So it's one of the things that is added into Garibandal that doesn't seem to be present in the, uh, in the messages of Elizabeth Kettleman. Now there are, again, there are seem things that I've seen here that from Elizabeth Kettleman that would seem to point to an illumination of conscience, but the, the explosion of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary seems to be, to me, to be something quite different. So the explosion of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, okay? Mm -hmm. Or the culmination of what I believe is divine mercy. And again, that falls in line with the theology of the divine mercy. I'll get into that um, probably in the next video. Um, I think if I'm remembering correctly and studying the theology of divine mercy, the way they word it is that these days of mercy uh, should be viewed as one day and culminates in an, in an event, okay? So much like I was talking about with the Feast of Divine Mercy, from Easter to the octave to the Feast of Divine Mercy is viewed as one day, okay? So it's a microcosm within time that happens every single year to give us a glimpse of the bigger picture of what's happening. So the days of mercy began with the resurrection, okay, when blood's, uh, Christ's blood was offered for our sins, and they continue, okay, into till the end. And it, the end of it culminates in an event, and that event is what the divine mercy is preparing us for, which is the second coming, okay? Now this explosion, of love to renew the face of the earth that Mary talks a bit about with Elizabeth Kettleman, again, points to um, divine mercy and a new heaven and a new earth fulfilling the, th the two prayers, Catholic prayers that we have, the Our Father, the prayer to the uh, Holy Spirit, and then also the end of the creed, as I had mentioned before, okay? But the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that the Day of Atonement is the, uh, the Divine Mercy fulfills the Day of Atonement feast in the Catholic Church, and the Day of Atonement, according to Christian theology, is the Day of the Lord, and the Day of the Lord is the Second Coming, in which Our Lady says the Day of Divine Wrath. But with that being said, we also have to remember that, um, that Scripture teaches that even though it's the Day of Divine Wrath, Jesus is bringing salvation to those who love him, and to destroy the godless sinners from the face of the earth, renewing the earth, okay, and and uh, clearing away for what we now know, or for what I understand to be, a period of peace that lasts a very very long time. And I will make these points as we move on through these videos, okay. Um, this is Conchita's words, her words. We cannot imagine how much we offend God. The Blessed Mother told me that people know very well that heaven and hell are real. But can't, but, but can't we see that we think about it only through fear and not for love of God, okay? So we think about going to hell out of fear rather than fearing offending God because we love him. So it's a holy fear of God. It's a healthy fear of God um, on account of our sins because uh, we, are, we have only ourselves to blame for the warning, okay? And we must suffer it for Jesus, for the offenses committed against God. Now there's that word suffer, we must suffer it. So it, it brings pain. Um, it will be painful for us to see. It will, be, um, it will be hard for us to see our sins, okay? But it will draw us to God. So again, I wanna point out these, these things because again, when I, when I looked at just the writings that I looked at, again, if anybody's more familiar with them, you know, leave a comment. But I don't. I haven't read anything so far with Elizabeth Kettleman where it talks about um, the flames of Mary's heart hurting. Uh, all it brings is love and joy and an explosion of the immaculate heart of Mary. Okay, so that again, this is one of the reasons that I see these as three separate events. Okay, because. They, they line up with the Jewish feasts, they line up with Catholic theology, and they line up with the feast days that have been um, fulfilled in the church, okay? Um, the other one, this is another one I wanna point out. Uh, this is a, uh, a uh, interview that was done with Conchita, 
and sh here's the question. It says, you once said to Father Marcelino, when you see the warning, you will know we have opened up to the end times. How can you, ex um, can you explain what you mean by this? Uh, here's the answer. The Virgin told us that the warning and miracle will be the last warnings or public spectacles that God will give us. This is why I believe that after them, we will be near the end times. So again, the warning and the miracle, there's two. And she, again, she uses the word warnings as or public spectacles. Both of those words are plural, but they're both to be seen as warnings, okay? So we have the warning, which she considers the illumination of conscience, and then the miracle. Now, what could that miracle be? Well, here's the question. Could it be what our lady was talking about to Elizabeth Kettleman, the greatest miracle that, um, that has ever taken place since the word became flesh. So again, this is why we have to be careful in reading these things and, and just throwing them all into one event called the warning, because according to Conchita herself, there are two events, the warning and the miracle. And these are warnings, not a warning, and they are public spectacles. In other words, they will be seen and they will be uh, experienced. We will be able to, to see those, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here is, uh, this is a continuation of the same one, but it's really, really important. Um, Conchita said, privately, I have said that is, it is something like two stars clashing, making much noise and producing a bright light but causing no material damage to people, um, yet being very frightening, okay? So again, when we go to the, the writings of Elizabeth Kettleman, there doesn't seem to be anything frightening about that. Um, she does talk about the conscience being um, uh, shaken up, faith being shaken. That could be seen as a warning, but every time she talks about this explosion of love from her immaculate heart, there's nothing about that mentioned. Um, and then she goes on, but please, Father, it's just a mere comparison. And the reason I want to point this out is because there have been some messages left on my channel where they talk about, <coughs> excuse me, where, where people have mentioned that it's, it's two stars clashing in the sky. But according to Conchita herself, um, she says that this is just a comparison. That's, she never said there were two physical stars that would actually clash in the heavens. So again, that's just one of way of discerning. Um, this is another one with Mary Lowly. She's, this is a question. Do you remember when the Blessed Mother said about the communist tribulation that is to precede the warning? Okay. Um, she goes, she says, it will look like the communists have taken over the whole world and it will be very hard to practice religion for priests to say mass or for people to open the doors of the churches. So mass will be shut down. Basically it will look, as she said, communists have taken over the world. Religion will be completely have to go underground. underground. Um, so this is a preceding sign that precedes the event of the warning. Okay, so it would be one of the signs to look for if you're gonna follow this stuff. It says, yes, uh, what's the question? It was because of the persecution and not because people were stopping practicing their religion. And there's the answer, yes, but I guess a lot of people will stop. Whoever practice it, practices their religion will have to go into hiding. Um, she basically says it will look as though the church had disappeared. She also says that little children will experience the warning um, that have not yet reached the age of reason. Uh, to me, that's scriptural because I find that terrifying. Um, I, I see it in the words of Jesus when he said, do not pray for me, but pray for your children and your children's children for uh, a terrible calamity will come upon the earth. Uh, sorry, because we just had a terrifying experience. Okay, so... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and read this, this, this question because again, it has the word terrifying in it. When the warning comes, it will be seen and felt by everyone on earth, 
Does this include little children who have not yet reached the age of reason? Answer, yes, that is why we felt sorry for them because it was such a terrifying experience. Um, again, a terrifying experience. This isn't the way uh, this was expressed to uh, uh, Our Lady, to Elizabeth Kettleman uh, at all. There's, I, I haven't read anything. Again, I I'm going to bounce back and forth between these because I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to give uh, a little bit of teaching here on this subject. I know what I experienced. And for me, it was terrifying. There, there aren't any words to, to adequately describe what that experience is like. Um, it wakes you up big time. And, uh, you know, so... I'm just going from my own experience, and like I say, when I apply, when I look at the messages of Garabandal, the interviews that were done, and then go back to some of the messages that were given to Elizabeth Kettleman, and when I read the messages of Elizabeth Kettleman, just the little ones that I've read, um, it <laughs> it doesn't seem to express anything like what I experienced. And so again, I'm just going off what what happened to me. Um, so I also wanted to point out that um, when Mary Lilly says, whoever practices religion will have to go into hiding, okay? So, and they're talking about when the warning happens. Um, the, the thing that, uh, that I noticed about this is that the warning happens in, in a time of extreme persecution, according to the, the, Ver, the Garibandal visionaries, okay? Um, this would contradict um, looking at, uh, and I know some have, and I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong, I'm just making a point. This would contradict um, looking at Matthew 24, 29 through 32 as the warning. And the reason is, is because Jesus says immediately after the tribulation of those days. As I said, words are very, very important. So if According to the, the seers and visionaries of Garabandal, that the warning happens in a time of extreme persecution would, again, would go contrary to that, uh, that understanding of Scripture because if it's immediately after the tribulation of those days, then the tribulation's over, there's no more persecution. Everything's kind of been um, laid waste at that point, if you will. Um, now I'm going to move to uh, Father Gobi. And this is the one that I read the other day that I really found kind of um, interesting. This is really important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a scripture that kind of goes along with this as well. Um, this was a message given to Father Gobi um, in 1995. It says, Tongues of fiber will come down upon you all, my poor children, so ensnared and seduced by Satan and by all the evil spirits who during these years have attained their greatest triumph. And thus you will be illuminated by this divine light and you will see your own selves in the mirror of truth and, holy, and in the holiness of God. It will be like a judgment in miniature which will open the door of your heart to receive the great gift of divine mercy. Um, this is really, 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 really important because this sounds exactly like the warning, okay? Even some of the words are, are used. Uh, illuminated uh, by his divine light, you will see yourselves. Um, it will be like a judgment in miniature. That was one of the ways in the interviews, some of the interviews that I read with Conchita, she described it the, described it the same way. But the last part of this message, to me, is the most important. It says, which will in turn, okay, open the door of your hearts to receive the great gift of divine mercy. And that in itself is another experience, okay, to receive the great gift of divine mercy from a theological standpoint and just thinking about that and the omnipresence and the power of Almighty God to receive the gift of divine mercy in, its, in and of itself would be an absolutely unbelievable experience of God. And so what we're talking about here are two 
uh, gifts, if you will, okay? Um, one is the warning, uh, or looks to be the warning, uh, that we will be illuminated by this divine light and you will see your own selves in the mirror of truth and the holiness of God. It is that experience that will open the doors of our hearts to receive the great gift of divine mercy. Okay, so we're speaking of two different things. If the, if it, what, well, let's look at it this way. What is the greatest gift, um, our greatest miracle that Jesus talks about in the diary of Faustina? He talks about the world covered in complete darkness, all the lights in the heavens being extinguished, um, the, uh, the cross appearing in the sky and illuminating the world for a period of time. Um, that corresponds scripturally is almost word for word of what Jesus said um, in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, when he says that immediately after the tribulation of those days, and that's really, really important because the warning doesn't happen after the tribulation, it happens during, because if it happened after, there would be no reason for conversion. There would be no need for a warning um, that the end was coming. He says, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Um, and they will see the Son of the Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. Um, so, again, to receive the great gift of divine mercy. Um, that is the greatest miracle talked about for humanity in the diary of Faustina. Okay? Uh, going on with this message, it says, And then the Holy Spirit will work a new miracle of universal transformation in the heart and in the life of all. Now, you notice the word universal. That is a complete, uh, that includes everything. That includes all of creation. A universal transformation. So we actually have three here. Okay. Um, receiving the gift of divine mercy. And through receiving that gift, the Holy Spirit will work the new miracle of universal transformation. So there's actually three here. If you break it down carefully, you have the warning or what looks to be the warning. You have the effects of the warning opening our hearts to receive the gift of divine mercy. And again, if the warning were the, the gift, it wouldn't be worded this way. Um, and then from that effect, um, the Holy Spirit will work a new miracle of universal transformation in the heart and life of all. Um, sinners will be converted, the weak will find support, the sick will receive healing, those far away will return to the house of their father, those separated and divided will attain full unity. And I understand that to be unity, uh, full unity into the Catholic Church. Um, that's just how I understood it right when I read it. It says, in this way, the miracle of the second Pentecost will take place. So if we're going to take this at face value, again, this is a message to Father Gobi. What, what uh, Our Lady just said is that in this way, the miracle of the second Pentecost will take place. So there are three things that happen um, is what she's saying, that the second Pentecost will take place. And so let's tie that in with the Catholic prayer that we say, okay? Um, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your, create, your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Those words right there are contained within this message in a different way, okay? So... Where there is the, the crying out, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, that's an explosion of the Holy Spirit, and they shall be created. And from that new creation, that new heart, you will renew the face of the earth. That is the complete cosmic or universal transformation. So we have um, Our Lady, you know, and I'm not, again, they're not approved or unapproved, I don't know. Um, Our Lady basically saying that the fulfillment of that prayer is going to happen. That's what this message, that's what this message has to do with. So there is a process in which the Holy Spirit is poured out. There is also um, 
two gifts. One is the tongues of fire that illuminates our souls as we see ourselves in the light of God, a judgment in miniature. The second is the one that she speaks here, the great gift, that then we will be prepared to receive the great gift of divine mercy. I need to point this out because it's really important. Divine mercy is not something. Divine mercy is someone. Divine mercy is Jesus. I am love and mercy itself. And what do we see in Matthew 24? You will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. That is receiving Jesus. That is the second coming. Really, really, really important. Okay. Um, it says, in this way, the miracle of the second Pentecost will take place. It will come with the triumph of my immaculate heart in the world. Now, remember, when you compare this, again, to Elizabeth Kettleman, um, it's that explosion of love from the immaculate heart of Mary that transforms the world, okay? And it's spoken about here. Um, only then will you see how the tongues of fire of the spirit of love will renew the whole world which will become completely transformed by the greatest manifestation of divine mercy. And that the greatest, the greatest by far, the greatest manifestation of divine mercy, and I don't know how anyone could disagree with this, is the revelation of Jesus himself. It is the second coming. Um, that is a manifestation of divine mercy. The greatest manifestation of Jesus is when he comes. Uh, it goes on. Um, I don't even know when this one was, but this again is to Father Gobi. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to read those yet. Yes, I am, because I got a point here to make. And she deals, she calls it um, two times. She refers to this in this message as the second Pentecost. Um, the second Pentecost will come to lead all the church to the summit of her greatest splendor. The spirit of wisdom will lead her to perfect the fit perfect fidelity to the gospel. The spirit of counsel will assist her and comfort her in all her tribulations. The spirit of fortitude, fortitude will bring her to a daily and heroic witness to Jesus. Above all, the Holy Spirit will communicate to the church the precious gift of all her, of her full unity and of her greatest holiness. Only then will Jesus bring her into his reign of glory. Okay, so we even see a preparation for the church to be brought into the reign of the glory of Christ. The sec second Pentecost will descend into the hearts to transform them and make them sensitive and open to love, humble and merciful, free of all egoism and of all wickedness. And thus it will be that the spirit of the Lord will transform the hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Um, that's scriptural and it comes right from Ezekiel 36. I'm going to have to end this pretty soon because I'm running out of battery. Um, but again, what we see is a process happening. So we have an initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and we know that's already happened at the first Pentecost. Paul speaks about this, of us receiving the first fruits of the Spirit. And it can't be the fullness of the Spirit because if it was, he wouldn't have called it the first fruits. And he wouldn't have talked about... Um, the, the gifts that are to come, the, the, what, if we could understand that, um, it, it's beyond human comprehension of, uh, uh, of human understanding. We can't understand it, okay? Um, but this comes from Ezekiel, and I recognized it immediately with, when I read the words. I said, this is scripture, and so I looked it up, and it's Ezekiel uh, 36, and it starts at uh, verse 16, and it's talk about the regeneration of the people. Okay, and um, I won't read the whole thing, but I will read the last part of it. Um, I'll read from verse 24. It says, For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and cleanse you from all your impurities. I will cleanse you from all your impurities. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you 
and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land that I gave your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will save you from all your impurities. I will order the grain to be abundant, and I will not send famine against you. I will increase the fruit on your trees and the crops in your fields. Thus you shall no longer bear among the nations the reproach of famine. Um, and you can, I'm going to go ahead and leave that up to you guys if you want to keep uh, reading. But one of, the, one of the things I want to point out here is verse 27. Um, I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. To, to do that perfectly is to live perfectly in the divine will of God. And so this is where the whole thing about the writings of Luisa Picaretta come in. And where it talks about the, uh, the transformation and the regeneration of a new heaven and a new earth and the fulfillment of these two Catholic prayers, um, it points back to the first creation, to Genesis uh, before the fall when Adam and Eve walked perfectly in the will of God. And again, I think this is a process. This period of peace is um, is the next step um, to uh, uh, getting back to the garden. Okay, there is a uh, there's a last step I believe that has to be taken, but this is the the second step. So the first was Jesus ascending into heaven and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the church age, and this period of mercy that should be seen as one day that we've been existing in. And um, then we move into a, a new day, another uh, period, if you will. So not the end of the world, but the beginning of something new um, in which righteousness dwells, in which the church flourishes, um, in which this prophecy of, of Ezekiel comes about. Um, I would point out, uh, and the reason I say that, again, is because of Scripture itself, uh, the prophecy of Isaiah 65, 17 through 25, in which people live very, very long. They still marry. Um, they still have children, um, but they also still die. And we again, we can't set Scripture aside. And Paul teaches that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And... Um, in this prophecy of Isaiah, people are living much, much longer. It describes what Our Lady is describing to these visionaries and these seers. Um, the period of peace is something so far beyond anything we can imagine. And the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is so much more than, uh, than what it just sounds like uh, if we just, you know, glaze over it and and we need to understand that the triumph of the immaculate heart of mary is the beginning of the reign of righteousness in this world and an outpouring of the holy spirit through the hearts of jesus and mary um, that will inevitably as uh, will um, prepare us to receive the gift of divine mercy and that's to receive Jesus himself, the greatest manifestation of divine mercy. And he speaks to this all about, um, uh, to Faustina throughout the diary, that um, it's to prepare the world for the second coming. I am yearning to pour this mercy out. That's what's going to happen, that the mercy of God will be poured out over the earth. And um, if over the earth, then also into our hearts. But. Anyway, I just went through a couple of these messages. This is one of the reasons that um, uh, I believe that there are a number of events um, or outpourings of the Holy Spirit that will take place. I think it's given in uh, increments, and, and each increment is a little bigger than the last, culminating in the explosion of God's love over the world and into our hearts. And so, as Jesus said, where, where I am, there the Spirit is, and there also the Father is. You can't have one without the other. And so, you know, this explosion of love, this explosion of divine mercy um, is a new existence in the Spirit of God. It's a renewal of the earth. That, that's the only way 
uh, to understand this. And um, again, with Father Gobi's messages, um, I think that uh, what was looked at that was problematic was that it was kind of adding something to uh, to the Catechism of the Catholic Church and what it taught. I would be irresponsible if I didn't tell you this. <clears throat> but the thing to understand also, again, with uh, when you read Daniel carefully, the, this, the book is sealed. And so um, until the end time, um, I believe that the book is being unsealed in, in the time we're living in. And uh, it's giving a greater understanding uh, to eschatology within the church. So it's not changing anything the church teaches. It's um, giving us a more understanding of it. And so it's kind of like in the early church, you wouldn't have seen, uh, you know, Peter praying the rosary. You know, it was only a, over a period of time that the church really began to understand the importance and the magnitude and the role that the Blessed Mother plays in, in uh, salvation history. Uh, just an extraordinary thing as you, if you watch the growth. It kind of works the same way. So um, I would say that the book of Daniel kind of backs that up because the, the book is sealed. The book is sealed until the end time. And it will, um, it's supposed to be opened and unsealed uh, during the end time, you know? So that's what the angel says, seal up, a, uh, seal up the book and its message until the end time. So the book is opened to give the church more instruction and, and more, uh, shed more light on the study of eschatology and the end time and the second coming and how that works. So um, I'm gonna end this video here because it's been very, very long <laughs> and I'm losing my voice. And um, in the next video, what I will talk about is uh, the second coming, the last trumpet. I wanna point some things out because there, uh, it's a number of places in scripture. So I wanna kinda of tie those together. And it's like I said, the wrath of God and, uh, and the manifestation, that's when Jesus comes, it is the day of divine wrath. But we need to understand that that same day is, is what brings our salvation. And I think this is where, um, you know, the, the message of the flame of love is, is trying to get us to focus on. It's trying to prepare us for the writings of Luisa Picaretta, how to live in the divine will. Um, uh, the, uh, from what I've read of Father Gobi seems to be expressing the same thing is, is Mary is leading us to her son. Inevitably that will culminate with the second coming. That's where she's leading us. And we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of that new heaven and a new earth. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing time we're living in, like I said. And so uh, be not afraid. There's nothing to fear. God loves you. He loves you right where you are. And um, <laughs> just amazing grace, you know, a powerful, powerful thing. So anyway, I hope this video helped to shed some light on some of those messages and um, kind of uh, make more clear of why I understand there to be more than one event um, other than the warning. And um, I think, again, scripture is clear. Even the messages are clear when you look at them. So um, uh, there, there are a number of events leading up to it, okay? So a warning, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the warning, again, happens during a, a very high time of persecution, uh, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, um, and then culminating again in the event of divine mercy, which is the second coming itself. There, I don't know how it could be understood in any other way. And so that's the gift we're waiting for. The greatest gift we're waiting for is, is Jesus himself, and that'll always be the case. So may God bless you, may he keep you, May he cause his face to shine upon you, and may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.